Now, one thing that we're going to need to do when we're setting up our coordinate planes is make sure that the plane we set up is going to let us plot the points that we're interested in. What do I mean by that? Let's suppose that we want to draw the following points. We want to draw the points 0, 250 and 100, 100. Now if I set up the coordinate plane I used in the last video, where is 100, 100 on this plane? That's right, it's way the heck off above the right-hand corner of the screen. Neither one of these points is anywhere near the points that are shown on this plane. This picture will not help us. Instead, we would like to draw a pair of axes where the numbers that we're interested in do show up. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to count all the way up to 250. I think that in order to successfully get up to 250, I'm going to have to skip count. Now, I notice that 50 is a common factor of all the numbers that interest me. So if I count by 50s, I think I'm going to see something really useful. I also notice that none of the numbers that interest me are negative. So I don't really need to extend my axes that far into the negative numbers. I really just want to look at positive numbers. With that in mind, I might set up a pair of axes that look like this. Notice I'm counting by 50s on both axes. Also notice that both of my axes extend a little bit beyond the numbers that I need in both directions. But now I can plot the point 0, 250. Right, this vertical line, the y-axis, corresponds to x equals 0. This horizontal line corresponds to y equals 250. So this is the point 0, 250. And I can also plot the point 100, 100. This vertical line corresponds to x equals 100. This horizontal line corresponds to y equals 100. So this is the point 100, 100. When you're planning how to draw your coordinate axes, there are some rules that you always have to follow. And there are some rules that you can break if you have a really good reason. The first rule is that each step on the x-axis has to be the same size, and each step on the y-axis has to be the same size. So I couldn't, for example, do something like this. Here's my x-axis. Here's a y-axis cutting across it. I could not mark my x-axis this way, where I go from 0 to 30, and then 30 to 45, and then 45 to 60. Why? Because this distance is 30, but this is only 15. So this is not allowed. Similarly, the x-axis and the y-axis have to cross at zero. We will see reasons for that as we continue to work with graphs. And the last rule is that we should extend the axes far enough to see all of the points that we're interested in. And in fact, unless we have a strong reason to do otherwise, we should extend them a little bit beyond. There are some other rules that aren't really rules, they're just guidelines. We'll follow these unless we have a good reason not to. In general, the x-axis and the y-axis should be on the same scale. When do we have a good reason not to do that? We might not want to do that 
if the numbers are on very, very different scales, for example, if we're interested in the points 0, 6,000 and 2, 4,000, we might want to count by thousands on the y-axis, but by ones on the x-axis. Another reason not to is if we have, for example, different fractions or different units in the numbers. A really good example is if we want to plot, say, the points 1 half comma 7 thirds and the points 3 halves comma 5 thirds. We might want to mark our x-axis in halves and our y-axis in thirds. Another guideline that's not a rule. All of our points should fall where the grid lines cross. That is, so notice up here. We actually had a mark at the number 250 that corresponded with a grid line in our graph paper. We actually had a mark at the number 100 that corresponded with a grid line in our graph paper. That was really useful because it gave us a guideline for where to actually draw that point. Why would we make an exception to this? We might not want to do this if our numbers don't have any nice common factors. So for example, if I wanted to plot the points 783 comma 291 and 501 comma 776, I might just want to count by 50s, say, and estimate where my points ought to be. The last thing that we always want to keep in mind is that we don't want our picture to be too big. What's too big? Well, if it doesn't fit on the piece of paper, it's definitely too big. If we have some fixed space that we have to fit our graph in, anything that doesn't fit in that fixed space is too big. In general, if it takes up more space on the piece of paper than the information that it contains is worth, it's too big.